With literally dozens of games coming out each week, it's easy to miss out on some of the better ones in all the noise. Hi folks, it's Peter and today on Get Indie Gaming, we're looking at five games from week 48, 2018 you probably missed. Number five, The First Tree, while already out on PC, became available on the Nintendo Switch and other consoles on November 30th. This one focuses on the nature of grief and loss, and sure it isn't something you'd want to fire up at a house party, and yet if you choose to spend some time with it, you'll likely find a story that feels incredibly personal and easily relatable, assuming of course you've experienced the loss of someone dear to you. While mostly an exploration game, the platforming sections where you need to collect little arcs of light used to guide you the right way or interact with the flight of butterflies are never overly challenging and strike an even note to counteract and offer something different to the walking sim elements. Of late, we've become increasingly attracted to games with a certain type of strong aesthetic, and the first tree ticks this box quite nicely. The world is beautifully put together with the lush meadows, snowy pastures and forestry sections looking almost dreamlike and abstract. There's a wonderful and cleverly pieced together soundtrack too, which at times is restful and soothing, and yet at other times is intense, passionate, and really does help the overall immersion. There are issues in some of the larger areas we became lost and unsure of the path forward. This got worse when you reach an invisible barrier at the end of the level, which certainly sticks in the memory. Visual cues are sometimes also difficult to spot with them hidden by foliage or other aspects of the world. This can be frustrating when you miss the odd objective here and there. All in though, it's a personal and affirmative story with beautiful scenery and one of the best soundtracks we've heard for years. Number 4, Rapture Rejects is based on the webcomic and cartoon series Cyanide and Happiness and offers a crass isometric battle royale shooter that popped into early access November 29th. It's a simple premise, the rapture has happened, and the last people alive happen to fight each other for God's amusement and the final golden ticket into heaven. As a battle royale game, we're going to say it's not going to trouble the usual suspects or receive millions of concurrent viewers on the usual streaming services. However, we really enjoyed the short time we've had with it. The fact that it was free for the first five days or so possibly helped, but I guess we'll never truly know. We found the combat pretty cool, although the range attacks are fairly useless, simply because to cross the play zone, they do so at an almost glacial pace. This saw us alter tactics to get up close and personal, which often came down to what seemed like a good old-fashioned bar-like brawl. While offering and supporting a maximum of 50 concurrent players, we don't think we joined a server with more than 30. That being said, we did jump into the Rapture Rejects just hours after it came out. It's due to stay in early access until the year after next, with plenty more options being added. There's talk of the addition of randomly generated maps, which of course means they'll be built on the fly. To be honest, we would take well-built maps by humans over the vast majority of the sloppy stuff generated by machines in any given situation. We hope the folks behind Rapture Rejects place their energies accordingly. At number three, Snow Ash Land also came out this past week in early access. It certainly feels like a mix and mashup of a number of different games. There's obviously the top-down shooter in there, whilst you'll also get to play with survival and RPG mechanics, all within a semi-open world. In an interesting or perhaps otherwise side note, Snow Ash Land currently has a Kickstarter running until Christmas Eve. It's looking to gain 7,000 euros, so that's nearly 8,000 US dollars, with the aim being to help fund the development and pay for the servers over the early access period of trading. As for the game, well, there's much to like, and we're cautiously optimistic on how this could develop during the open access period. It's certainly not short on atmosphere, and so far the construction building aspects are a strong point and feel well implemented. We didn't look too long into the faction side of things as our time with it was on the short side and there weren't really enough players to interact with to pass a better opinion. We do appreciate the top-down shooter aspects and the overall art style and how it looks and sounds feels relatively fresh and appealing. Overall, Snow Ash Land is worthy of a look over, although we think there's still plenty of room for development and we'll be sure to come back to this a few times before it leaves early access. At number two, we have Rival Mega Gun, a game so dripping with nostalgia, it puts us back on the sofa watching Going Live and cartoons on a Saturday. Just look at those 16-bit shoot-em-up graphics and soundtrack 
which almost perfectly replicate something you would have found within those games from the time. While others disagree and we respect their reasoning, our judgement and likelihood to play these sort of games comes from wanting to compare and contrast the experiences from our youth to what's on offer today. We're not looking for the same experience, let's be quite clear. However, we are looking to see how these clones, or should we say tributes, a nod there to the always on point indie gamer chick and a recent extremely well written editorial of hers, push things forwards. To our mind rival Mega Gun, while looking backwards in its art and sound choices, does add modern elements to its overall bow. The real winner here is the implementation of the couch co-op and we're fairly sure the team here built this one from the get-go with a view for it to be played with a group of mates. There's also a fairly decent online multiplayer which in itself was a joy to spend a few hours battling with others over the internet. There is a single player and yet we haven't had a chance to play it so we can't really pass comment. That being said, even in this mode you can play split screen with the computer AI. So as should be fairly apparent, this tribute to games 20 or so years ago is pretty darn good and certainly gets a recommendation from us here at Get Indie Gaming. Research shows you loved Funtown City but wanted something more. So come get more at Funtown World. Bigger means better. At number one, Parkitect left early access this past week, having been there since 2016. This is the first time we've seen this park simulation management thing, and as far as we can tell, it's one of the best games of its type. As you could expect, there's the usual theme park stuff to do, and it certainly doesn't get done by itself. You'll need to set up shops, build coasters, and manage staff, and it's up to you to make sure the cash keeps rolling through the tills and punters keep those turnstiles revolving. While graphically there are stronger options on the market, such as Planet Coaster, the real area where Parkitect knocks the ball over the boundary for six comes from its construction system. It's so easy to use compared to others and it enables you to build some of the most technically difficult and intricate rides and parks of them all. The low poly art style is superbly executed and the options to add props and scenery is honestly second to none. While we haven't had the time to look at it too closely, we understand the game has a thriving modding scene, so that's something for us to follow up in due course. If you have any interest in these sort of games, you should give this one the once over. Having said that, if you do, you're probably already aware of Parkitect, so perhaps it's doubtful you missed this when it launched on November the 29th. So what are the games of this past week did we also miss? Let us know and leave us a comment on what you're thinking. If you like the video, please leave us a like, and if you haven't done so, now would be a fine time to subscribe to the channel, and if you do, don't forget to click on that notification bell too. As always, many thanks for watching, I'm Peter, and you can follow us on Twitter at Get Indie Gaming. We look forward to welcoming you back here soon for more indie game videos.